CCS tends to attract students who are extremely bright and exceptionally motivated and in particular very self-disciplined. They have a good idea that they actually want to have hands-on experience at a research university doing research in some form or another or performance or perhaps their art. The key to the whole equation at CCS quite frankly is a lot of personalized attention and a lot of mentorship from the core faculty. The art majors do art. The painters paint, the sculptors sculpt, the writers write, and the scientists do science. And that's really what Creative Studies is about. Bruce and I have started teaching uh, a class uh, that we call Flowers, and this class consists of uh, art students, science students, um, some students from other disciplines. What we do in that class is, um, is have each one of the students uh, work, get to really be good friends with a particular flower on campus, and write a, a, a scientific description of that, of that flower, and make a, a botanical illustration of it. We give the students a tour of the greenhouse that I'm in right now. We give a tour of the herbarium. Uh, we go to various print shops and look at bot older botanical prints. They'll take a trip to Lotus Land. Uh, and we invite in people who work with plants in other, other manners. And so we try to give the student the basis that when they walk out of the course, they'll never look at plants the same way again. They will see them differently. I bring more of a hands-on or, or the, the real world. I mean, I'll tell them about a budget. You know, I'll tell them about a timetable. You know, it's not just creative ideas and concepts. And a lot of it, most of it, goes into the less glamorous part of you know the nuts and bolts of, of putting a program. What's a building department? What's a building code? You know, the, how those things shape. You know, the parameters within which a building must. You know be defined. Some of the things we like to do in our classes is to bring current research into the classroom to get students stimulated and interest in the subject. So some of the experiments that we do in lab have not even been published in scientific journals yet. And so students um, get the opportunity to use these instruments, again, that most students don't see until they become graduate students or enter the workforce. We like to give them that head start and show them what chemistry is really about in the real world, not just what we like to study about out of books. When you finish with your story, I want you to um, do what is known as a storyboard. Those of you who are screenwriters, screenwriters anyone? One of the really interesting things about Elizabeth is that since she's coming from the industry, she can tell us a lot about what it actually means to make a living as a playwright and a writer. And that's it was really good for me because I'm coming to this school with the idea that I want to go and become a playwright or write for television because I know that's where you can actually make money in it. So she actually gives us tips and realistic and like here's how you make it, here's what you have to do as a woman, here's what you have to do if you're Asian. What was the so-called plot? We don't call it plot anymore, we call it story. So tell the, that's why I put it. CCS instructors I think are uh, unique in that we tend to want to interact with students um, at a very intense level. I really want the students to get in my face. I want to get in their face. I want them to challenge me. I want to challenge them. And in a sense, it's a way to actually make a one-on-one -on -one contact with someone who's already in the field that the student might actually be interested in and to really begin to understand what it's like, for instance, to be a scientist, to be an artist, to be a writer, to be a physicist. And that's the kind of, of instructor-student uh, relationship that um, we are attracted to.
so the College of Creative Studies the mobile units class, uh, we did a lot of work outside of the studio and outside of the gallery. We made things like um, an elongated wheelchair that four or five students could sit on at a time. Uh, a rickshaw was built and even a small mobile art gallery was built. And the idea with all of these projects was to take things out of the gallery, out of the studio, and bring them to the rest of the campus, to students that otherwise wouldn't see this thing. And in fact, all of the mobile works um, objects relate to a history of artwork done in public places. Not just uh, monuments, but uh, temporary sited works. So it actually belongs to a long tradition and they learn about this tradition through making these works. It's not simply for fun. Um, they're engaged thoroughly in uh, theoretical discussion about what they're doing. Um, they're also learning what it's like to step beyond the bounds of an established gallery space and engage their work with the general public, which is entirely different. And that's a very valuable experience for most of them. I think when a student has decided for themselves that they are going to measure the, say for example, the period of a pendulum, how long it takes it to swing back and forth through one full cycle, and that they're going to see whether or not the weight on the end of the string has a big influence on that or none, and they discover that it has essentially no influence, uh, there's a great excitement that's generated by this because this is a discovery you've made for yourself. I was teaching a Virginia Woolf class that was a complete experiment in the spring and there was a student who came up with ideas about this theme that was going on in Wolf's novels that I had never noticed and that was really exciting because because she was doing exactly what she should have done and it was fun. The students who would benefit most out of this program would be those who are internally driven to create, who are not waiting for someone to come and tell them to take this course, take that course, and do these homeworks, and in the end you will get a degree. It's the opposite in some sense. You would be really pushed to your own individual limit. The most unusual part about the College of Creative Studies is that it does bring together both faculty members and students into a common ground where they can create. In this particular class, Leslie Hogan's students are primarily music composition students, and um, I bring with me our advanced level choreography students. constantly amazed by the creativity that our students show because, um, you know, they do things that I never think of. Just tremendous. And in this particular case, um, most of the students, if not all of the students, who composed for the class were also performing the music. And so again, it was this, this all-encompassing experience and um, a lot of work, and I was really, really proud of them. CCS is unique in terms of the atmosphere. 
everyone there is just as interesting as you are, even if it's a different discipline than what you're studying. You can always learn from other people and they always have good ideas and it's just fun to hang around and talk to people. CCS is about loving to learn and everyone here loves what they're doing and they are here for a reason and they're part of CCS because that's what they want to do. The university here is, is a large entity. There's a lot of students, there's a lot of staff, there's a lot of faculty and it's really easy for students and, and even faculty to get lost in the sheer numbers. Creative Studies almost feels like a small family. Everybody knows everybody and it's, it's a very collegial environment. People are friendly um, all the way down from the, the first year student to the most senior administrator, which would be the provost. Everybody is, is uh, available for, for comment, for speaking. Um, it's, it's just a, a wonderful feeling to be in a, a large school, but to have this, this close-knit community of, of people that are all there for one purpose, and, and that purpose is to, to give the students a good education. Thank you.